friends. Another episode of The Daily Creative right here. I'm going to answer your questions. Um, you guys know the show. If you don't, then just look around on the internet. I answer your questions about your journeys on becoming a creator or an entrepreneur, whether you're going from zero to one, as in just starting out, or going to the next level. And we've got two questions today. One's from, actually, we'll just play them. Here's question one. Hey, Chase. My name is Chris Pringley. I'm an inspiring photographer, videographer, and the challenge I'm struggling with is where do I begin? What exactly do I do <laughs> with what I want to do? Like, okay, I have a lot of passion in what I want to do. I just don't know where to take it from here and where to go with it. And that is my biggest downfall because I feel like I haven't done anything. So if you can help Got it. me figure out where to go from here and where to start. Awesome. Chris, thanks very much, man. So uh, first of all, this advice goes to, it, you know, Chris might be a photographer. There's a lot of photographers in this community, a lot of photographers in the world now that we all have this phone in our pocket or similar. Um, but this goes for all creative disciplines. And I think it also goes for entrepreneurial ones as well. Um, the, you have two jobs. And your first job is to find out what you're supposed to be doing. And then the second job is do that. So if you know what you're supposed to be doing, then you know, see point B and just start running at the thing that you're supposed to be doing. And if you don't know um, what you're supposed to be doing, play. You need to experiment. And the same is true for you know, taking your first picture, deciding if you're gonna paint more or you're gonna focus on photography or design or furniture making or starting a company. Uh, and the fact that you're able to put that out there and be vulnerable, I appreciate it, but there's so many folks who they feel creative and they dabble a lot and they don't feel like they have traction. You should make a full-time job of dabbling. And there's the most interest, like if you don't know where to start, start like what are you curious about? What do you, when no one's watching and you have 45 minutes or an hour and um, you've got, you, you know, take the TV away, take all the stuff away. Like, what, do you, what gets you excited? Do you want to um, read about robots? Do you want to make a film? Do you want to, you know, take a walk with your iPhone and take pictures? Um, or is there some product or goal you want to help people, you want to give back, you want to start a nonprofit? Like, what are you curious about? And explore those things. I like to say, pull on the thread. Don't feel like you have to, like everything needs to be for a reason or, for, or, or, or um, a perfect next step. To me, that's the thing that's like, it's so many people stuck. I'll give you one example of my own life is that I started taking pictures with the iPhone in 2007 when it first came out, I guess, seven. And it, it was, it instantly became this amazing, even though it was two megapixels or no, one and a half or something like that, a point two, I don't remember, small. And the fact that I was able to take pictures, I was at a wildly successful photography career, traveling all over the world for the Apples, the Nikes, the, you know, making millions of dollars, and yet I found my passion in sort of getting back from those big productions back to small stuff. And so I, I realized that I was just taking pictures. You know, when I was waiting in line for my coffee, I would take you know, close-ups of the, the donuts. And it sounds weird now because it's a little bit different time, but I was just experimenting and allowing myself. And I was like, hey, there's nothing that can come of this because it's just, you know, it's 0.2 megapixels or whatever. And lo and behold, that led to my, you know, extreme curiosity, which made me develop the first iPhone app that shared photos of social networks, which was the app of the year in 2009, which, you know, A, made a lot of money. B, you know, I was on every news channel in like 20 countries across the world. The best camera is the one that's with you. And it, it unlocked my entrepreneurial career, which then led to Creative Live, which then, which then, which then. You get it. So, and I was a photographer. So the same, I'm charging you with the same task, which is just start doing things that interest you or that you're curious about. Research things, but don't sit back, sit forward, like do stuff. It's sort of like, um, don't, don't speculate on so many tutorials on the internet. Like try do-tutorials, okay? Do stuff, get out in the world, get into adventures, and when you find that thing, you pull on it for a little bit, it might, might be a dead end, but I promise you that that dead end is gonna take you somewhere and where another door is gonna open. So that is your first job in life, and your second job after you've found thing one is to go bonkers on that thing. Master the thing, that you, when you find that thing that, when you, like, 
people are just celebrating Friday. I just saw on my feed, like, hey, it's Friday. What? I don't, I don't even understand that. To me, like, f- Friday is when I have to stop. The world stops responding to the things that I want. I'm, I'm like passionately grabbing for something and I'm like, I have to wait until these people get back to respond to the things that I'm trying to just keep going. And Mondays are I'm like, yes, I gotta get back and active be around my people, do my stuff. That's the mode that when you find some of these things that you are passionate about that you will be in. And it is insanely valuable to be in that mode, both for the world to see and feel your gifts, but also for you. Because when you're on that path, you feel good, you feel more alive, you take better care of yourself. You're, if, if you wanna be interesting, just be interested in something, the thing that you care deeply about. Um, and I think you'll find so many doors open up. So um, I don't know where you are in your journey, but the advice, it doesn't matter. It's the same advice and it's this, okay? Go to work, Chris, go to work exploring, playing. Um, what did you like to do as a kid? Go play, go goof off, do those things. All right, so that's an answer to question number one from Chris. Uh, let's hear question number two. Where's that coming in from? Question number two. Hey, Chase, my name is Marcus Owens. Marcus. A.K.A. Marcus Owens Storyteller. Instagram, M-O underscore Storyteller. M-O um, underscore my question is, Storyteller. I already have a successful photography brand and filming brand, and I get a lot of questions of people and a lot of people inboxing me asking me about shadowing or mentoring. I sure. was asking, how could you get onto the teaching side of this business. Got it. I would like to, that would be my end goal. I would rather be teaching, even to the point where I could teach on Creative Live maybe one day. All right. So yeah, how can I transition from just being a photographer and an inspiration and uh-huh. an influencer to being a teacher? Thanks, Chase. Awesome. There's one way and it's do it. So start small, start mentoring someone. You said you've got people on your inbox, start teaching one. Bring someone on as an intern. Um, help them understand and learn the craft that you've mastered in a small scale or small non-scalable simple way so you can find out if you truly love it because sometimes I think when people are like "Ah, I want to do that over there and then when you get there you're like "Ah, I really don't love it that much so if you like stop all your photography business and you run at that thing and you find out it's not your thing then you sort of like put yourself on fire or ambush yourself so uh, I would just start. It's, this is the same answer with so many questions that I, I t- absolutely realize I identify with myself. I get blocked just exactly the way that you guys do. Um, and it's, it's important to keep coming back to just like do the work, do the work. So what is the work I want to do? I want to be teaching. Okay, what's the small, simple first step that I can do? Teach a class in your local market. Like have a, uh, whether it's photography or design or whatever, whatever, if it's gymnastics, like have a little seminar, find some people, tell them you're teaching, have it, you know, be affordable or whatever mechanism you feel like you can use to get people to attend you teaching and teach something. Find out if you like it, find out if they like working with you or learning from you. Um, now, I'm going to put a pin on that just for a second. I'm going to rewind. I have seen, and we've taken questions on this show before, people who are not master photographers or are not fantastic at, at whatever their craft is, whether it's gymnastics or design, um, or you haven't actually built a business, but you're teaching about uh, entrepreneurship or, or online sales or something. Um, I find your road to doing that will be difficult, and I think it will be hard to inspire and teach if you can't demonstrate some form of... Um, of excellence, or I, I, I use the word mastery, um, because I think you'll be seen as, it's, it, not that you can, can't teach, you, you, all you have to know is one thing, and you can teach one thing to somebody else, but I'm thinking about people who in terms of want to make a career out of that. So I'm always an advocate of mastering something, like double down, triple down, be incredible at it. Sure, you've, you've identified yourself as successful in the photography industry, an influencer, you used a bunch of adjectives to describe yourself, fantastic. Then just you know, start teaching, start on a small scale, see if you'd like it, if so, grow. What you need to do is get reps. You need to get repetition, you need to get comfortable being in front of people, and you need to get their feedback if they're loving it. If they're falling asleep or they're not engaged, that should be a clue that you got work to do. And I promise you will have work to do. It's just like anything else. How hard did it take you to, how, how long did it take you or how hard was it to master whatever thing you want to teach? It took you a long time. I think similarly, you need to approach teaching. So um, I'm gonna keep this one tight because uh, I think it's a great question. 
just have you mastered something? And if so, continue to work on that craft because people will, you, you will, as a teacher, you'll never know everything. But you want to be prepared. You want to show that you've done the work. And I think you're more likely able to charge a, a rate that's repeatable and can make a living and a life doing what you love as a teacher if you have mastered something. Second of all, do that stuff and repeat and learn and ask questions of the, you know, ask feedback of the people who took a class from you. Start small, grow up to big. The people who are teaching on Creative Live, they have um, mastered the craft of teaching as well. It's not just to be good at your craft, you have to be able to talk about it, share it, stand in front of people. And um, yeah, all that stuff helps. So it's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Those are two questions. Uh, again, this is the show where I'm doing my best to answer your question. I think we're, um, I don't know what episode we're on, doesn't matter. There's hundreds of questions, or at least 100, that have been asked and answered. And if, if you found any sort of gravity and insight here that you didn't have before, there's a bunch of other episodes. Go back and check them out, and it means the world to me if you share them. So thank you so much. Again, 802-962-4357 if you want your question on the show. All right, then. I came into the camera this way. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave going this way. Bye.